we must cry out. We must cry out in this season when the veil is thin. We must remember the lost art of lamentation. The title for this service was the first to come to me last summer as I began to contemplate this year ahead and what we would need to consider together. I have to say I didn't realize how appropriate it would be for this day, but I did know this. I had just gotten news of a tragedy that I knew would hurt many people and have many repercussions, and I felt that need to cry out. I had a lot to say about this subject, my friends, that I will not say because the day's events have needed to take the time they took. Though I will say that lamentation is not on any timetable. But what I do need to say is a few things to you. I need to tell you that we do need places to cry out. Sometimes in our lives, we must cry out because otherwise the grief and the sadness that we feel within can be too great to carry. And it pushes out everything else and it begins to take up room that we need to hear the beauty of children bouncing up and down, singing a song of joy that they have planned for weeks. It takes out those appreciations of the small ironies and humors of life that are all around us. It takes out, it can even push out if we don't give it space, the most cherished memories of those we love. We must cry out, especially in these times when we wake morning after morning to more news of the world that makes us lament. We must cry out, my friends. Lamentation, the idea of lamentation, is a gift given to us by our Jewish ancestors. Our Jewish ancestors who knew what it was to be persecuted, who knew what it was to have their hearts broken again and again, and who still do. Lamentation is defined this way, the passionate expression of grief or sorrow or weeping. It is an old-fashioned term that we may think we have left behind, and I tell you it is a gift from our past that we need to reclaim. Because these are times that call for lamentation. We need to acknowledge that when we have loss in these times, when we face fear in these times, it is almost overwhelming. And the way that we make space for that is to cry out and to be present and to allow places such as we do in our grief group, which just happens to meet this Friday at noon. Because we cannot afford, my friends, to hold all this sorrow and pain in our hearts when we hold it, it becomes a barrier to our physical health. It becomes an absolute sickness to our soul. And it also can become a barrier between us and life and those we love the most. We must cry out and release this to make space. We have a tradition that sometimes gives us a lot of messages. Our culture says, for example, that men do not cry. But more perniciously, our culture among us sometimes says that grief is not rational, it is not intellectual, it is not something that we as thinking people need to indulge in, and I tell you, we do, especially in these times. Because what we allow to be trapped in our hearts will begin to take over our hearts and not leave us the space we need to do the rest of our life and to find the joy that we know is out there, the brilliance that is always out there. Sometimes when we are on the edge of tears, we must let those tears fall. When we need to take time to have a requiem for something that has been lost in our life, we need to take time. Our ancestors knew something that we have tried to forget. And one of the things that those who are bringing us grief after grief, grief after grief, are counting on is that we will be parsimonious in our mourning, that we will only mourn the things 
that pertain to us personally, but we will not mourn the things that are being done to the common body of humanity. And we must have the heart big enough to hold all of those. And that is why lamentation, the great crying out, must become a part of our world as well. Only through that can we hold and resist those sources of hate that would constrain us and separate us. We know that we can grieve, and we can also laugh. We know if we can grieve, we can also act. We know if we can grieve, we can continue to hold the memories of those we have lost and also the memory deep within us of what this world can be. One of my friends is the Reverend Mark Bellatini, but we know each other mostly because we have loved a lot of the same people in our lives and we often talk when one of those people has died. And Mark and I talk sometimes about, mostly electronically, about what it means to be perpetual mourners. There is a point at which, when you have lost so much in your life and it has happened again and again, that mourning is part of the fabric of who you are. These times are making all of us perpetual mourners. And in that sense, my friends, we must learn and reclaim the lost art of lament. I close with these words from May Sarton. Dark into light, light into darkness spin. When all the birds have flown to some real ha haven, we who find shelter in the warmth within, listen and feel new cherished, new forgiven. As the lost human voices speak through us, and blend our complex love, our mourning, without end. We must cry out, my friends, and that cry will be a gift to the world. <laughs>